U.S. Attorney General Merrick Garland earlier today announced that the Justice Department is launching an investigation into the practices of the Minneapolis Police Department. In his announcement, he noted that yesterday's verdict in the trial of former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin does not address potentially systematic policing issues in Minneapolis. The investigation I am announcing today will assess whether the Minneapolis Police Department engages in a pattern or practice of using excessive force, including during protests. The investigation will also assess whether the MPD engages in discriminatory conduct and whether its treatment of those with behavioral health disabilities is unlawful. President Biden, in his remarks yesterday, also made clear that the Chauvin verdict is just the beginning, stating the need for confronting head-on systematic racism and racial disparities that exist in policing. It was a murder in the full light of day, and it ripped the blinders off for the whole world to see the systemic racism the Vice President just referred to. The systemic racism is a stain on our nation's soul. What implications might what we see unfolding have for law enforcement and crime across the nation? Joining me to talk about this, Jason Johnson, former Deputy Police Commissioner, for the city of Baltimore and now president of the Law Enforcement Legal Defense Fund. Jason, welcome back to Washington Watch. Good to be with you, Tony. Now, uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking at this like uh, pretty much every other American. I have the facts. I was not a part of the jury. Um, I do have the benefit of being on the street as a police officer for about 10 years. Uh, I would say that Derek Chauvin uh, broke the law. And now while I think there was piling on here, uh, I certainly think you know, there was uh, there was wrongdoing on on his behalf. But is he a scapegoat um, for the left that is demanding the defunding and the removal of police from the streets of America? Well, I don't know if scapegoat is the right word, but I certainly think that that the, the, the prosecution and conviction of Derek Chauvin is being used as a launch pad for a panoply of efforts at uh, so-called police reform that I think are misguided, excessive, and will really erode uh, the quality of law enforcement that we have enjoyed in this country for decades. Uh, you already see that happening. You, you already see violent crime skyrocketing in most cities, and, and measures of police productivity are plummeting. And uh, that is a concerning sign, but I think, unfortunately, we're early in this cycle, and a lot of the uh, the activities you've seen over the last couple of days and, and most most notably the rhetoric coming from the White House and from other uh, prominent Democrats uh, on Twitter and in other places, basically tearing down law enforcement as a profession uh, are, are deeply concerning to me and to us. Uh, uh, Jason, the prosecution in the case, uh, they w went to great lengths to make it very clear that they were not pointing out law enforcement. This was about one individual, Derek Chauvin. But that message seems to be countered today by the U.S. Attorney General, who says they now need to investigate the entire police department there in Minneapolis. Well, it's a familiar tactic. It was used in the Obama administration widely, where whenever there was a controversial police-involved incident that, that garnered the public's attention, they would launch a pattern of practice investigation into that entire agency. I had a front row seat at that in Baltimore in the wake of the Freddie Gray death. And this it's, ha it's going to happen again over the next four years under the Obama administration and Garland Department of Justice. These investigations are uh, sweeping in scope, uh, intensive, year-long, 18-month-long investigations that normally result in a consent decree that costs hundreds of millions of dollars um, to uh, monitor and implement uh, so-called reform and take 10 to 15 years. Um, and we're going to see that. I think we're going to see that repeatedly under the this administration. Now, Jason, you've stated in looking at the numbers from the federal government's own numbers, the FBI, that we've seen a huge spike in violent crime in the last year. You attribute that to the uh, the attack on law enforcement as they have kind of backed away, not engaging in such aggressive uh, law enforcement practices. I mean, 
there's going to be fallout from this. I can only imagine we're going to see more of that, which means we're only going to see an increase, a greater increase in violent crime. Absolutely. I think that problem will deepen. Now, interestingly, I, I see some prominent Democrats uh, in their messaging are trying to attribute um, some uh, dissatisfaction by law enforcement at the result of the Chauvin trial. I don't see that at all. I think law enforcement largely understood that prosecution, accept the verdict as the product of a fair trial. But it's the other things. It's the imputation of guilt that people have taken from um, the um, this case in Minneapolis and spread it throughout every high profile police use of force, including one yesterday in Columbus, Ohio. Um, consent decrees, rhetoric uh, negative about police, uh, rolling back of procedural due process rights for police officers, threatening qualified immunity uh, for police officers. Um, these are the things that it's not as if uh, police officers are taking an immature, reflexive action saying, you know what, I'm going to take my toys and go home. They're making a risk management decision right. where they understand what the stakes are. And um, and you hit the nail on the head. Well, when you see congresswomen like Maxine Waters out on the streets demanding what they call justice and not going away if they don't get it, I mean, that sends a message to men and women in law enforcement. The message is guilty, and uh, the presumption is you're guilty if you're involved in any of these high-profile uses of force that make their way um, onto a YouTube video or become viral on social media or result in a, a tragic outcome. Then that's going to be used. Uh, you, um, uh, there, there's been a lot of activity on social media today calling for the prosecution or worse of the officer involved in that Columbus use of force, uh, use of deadly force, right. which of course was in the midst of a, a young woman getting ready to be stabbed. Potentially right. to death. And Jason, that's a good point because I think what's, what's going to happen, actually, unfortunately, you're going to see law enforcement officers hesitate and they will lose their lives and the public they're protecting will be at greater risk as well because of the hesitation of using deadly force when necessary. Jason, thanks so much for joining us. Great to talk with you again. Great. Thanks for having me.